It's exciting to see a little one being able to speak for the first time. I mean, it must melt your hearts as parents when you hear, Mama, Mama. And then Dad comes over and says, Dad, 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 Dad. <laughs> and they start learning some words, and, and as they pick things up, um, they're usually short syllables, and, and maybe, you know, you talk to this little child and you say, you want to come up? Well, what child doesn't like to be picked up and as tall as all the adults and see from this perspective? And when you ask, do you want to be picked up? Want to come up? They hear the word up. And so you set them down and they're like, up, up, up. And another one of those words that they learn is toddlers. Again. So if you're swinging them around or you're going, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Again, you just keep doing that, but at some point, as adults, you get tired of it. You have to admit it. You kind of finally say, like, oh, no, no, no. Again, again. You say, okay, one more time. Got it? One more time. Uh huh. Boom. <laughs> again. And you know, sometimes this also comes from, you know, in the hand of a jelly bean. Again. So you hand of another jelly bean. Again. And at some point, you know, it's not good for a 30-pounder to have 30-some jelly beans. And you say, no more. And they can look at us a lot of these times as if like, why not? We were having so much fun. Why do you want the fun to end? Do you not like me? Do you hate me? And in some way, when we stop, we stop them from getting exactly what they want every time they want it. It's a form of discipline. And discipline is good. And it is necessary. But as we heard in the second reading, at the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. And sometimes even as adults, we can want what we want. Why shouldn't I have another jelly bean? I have a grandma who's going to be turning 97 in a couple of weeks. She has her mind, her memories, her faith. She lives in assisted living, and she also has a water. Just in the last few years. And Grandma, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. It's just these knees, these darn knees. And it can seem as if, why wouldn't God want me to have my knees? You know, how strong so I can do that? And that God is our Father, and He pays attention to these things. 
I would imagine, I certainly am not a parent, but I go through this and I can only imagine parents every once in a while, you give up. At least just for a little while. You know, maybe later. What's for supper? Uh, we're going to have pork and we're going to have squash. Mm. And then you have to tell them you're going to eat your pork, you're going to eat your squash. But every once in a while, doesn't it just kind of like, can I just have cereal? Don't you just as a parent every once in a great while want to say or maybe you have said, I don't care, eat five bowls of cereal. I don't care if you're going to eat ice cream instead. But we know that if we're the kind of people as parents who say, I don't care if you want to play in the busy street of Weston. I don't care if you want to watch TV passing at night. I don't care if you want to do your homework or not. We know that's a sign of a parent who's breaking down and isn't doing the good parenting. And we probably all go through that at some point or another. But a good parent, when they're at their best, says, get out of the street, it's dangerous. Turn the television on. Get your homework done. Brothers and sisters, have you forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children? My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. Endure your trials as discipline. For God treats you as his children.